Hello and welcome to yet another edition of Hello Educator. This episode is from Mango Science Radio from Obli Chandran. You might have heard Obli Chandran's previous stories where he had mentioned about a solar eclipse that made Einstein a hero. This is another solar eclipse and uh, this solar eclipse was observed in India in 1868 and there were certain phenomenal discoveries from that. So with that little piece of information let's delve into the story. Hi Mango Science Radio listeners, uh, Obli Chandran here. Uh, I'm going to share an interesting story uh, today but for that we'll have to travel back 152 years ago in 1868 the date is august 18 so there is a very excited team of astronomers a uh, one led by a french astronomer called jansen and he was accompanied by a lot of astronomers from madras observatory uh, and the location that they were in was guntur uh, back then it was in madras state so they were eagerly awaiting a solar eclipse a total solar eclipse on that day and for what reason was uh jansen was there is to hoping to find something interesting during the eclipse so he had something he had a very very special device with him to observe the eclipse and that is called as a spectroscope and this device was invented 10 years earlier by another scientist called kirchhoff i think some of you may remember uh, in your 12th or 11th grade you would have learned about kirchhoff's law of electrical circuits but uh, most of you may not know he was not just known for that he was also known for contributing to this uh, building this device called spectroscope so what is this spectroscope device do so it is it behaves very much like a prism so it collects the sunlight and once you pass the light through this device called spectroscope it will break it up into its individual colors all the seven colors uh, and the only difference that other than the prism what a normal prism would do it is it can break the light into a much finer resolution you can take much closer look at the spectrum of light that you get of course the one of the common spectrum that we all know uh, is the rainbow uh, which is the job of uh, splitting the colors of the sunlight is done by the raindrops there but it is the s- same concept that's in working here but it can split into much finer resolution so this spectroscope so what is the use of you know breaking up the light into uh, seven colors uh, of course it looks beautiful when you look that you know light is made up of all the seven colors it looks beautiful in the sky when a rainbow comes but apart from that what use could those spectrum be it was later found in fact found in much more detail by kirchhoff that these spectrums when you observe it closely it is not a continuous spectrum there are dark lines gaps in the spectrum and also some places where there are much brighter lines in the spectrum people were confused they didn't know what th- those meant why is the spectrum not continuous why are there dark and bright lines in the spectrum so kirchhoff theorized that and also actually he uh, came up with a very strong evidence that those lines that were seen in the spectrum both the dark lines and the bright lines correspond to particular elements that is present so he said he can the sunlight spectrum can be broken and if the lines are actually studied in detail they can reveal actually what is the sun made up of that is spectacular he in fact discovered the element sodium using the spectrum the same uh, the lines that he the, the spectrum he observed from the sun that was spectacular now the same device that this guy built now jansen uh, hoped he could use it to find something else something more interesting so then he observed the eclipse on on the day of the eclipse the moon was moving in front of the sun and during the totality phase that is when the moon completely moves in front of the sun that is the time where you can observe the outer regions of the sun more clearly without the disturbance of the actual sun's uh, view so uh, he observed a particular region called the chromosphere the chromosphere is a region that is uh, just right above the outermost layer of the sun which we call it the photosphere so he observed chromosphere he observed the light from the chromosphere and that he passed it through the spectroscope and split it up into the component colors that is a spectrum and he observed the spectrum closely now when he observed it he saw a bright yellow line he saw a very peculiar bright yellow line and he initially assumed or rather confused it with the sodium that was discovered 10 years earlier by kirchhoff 
but eventual observations from him or studying of the spectrum from him revealed it is not sodium it is something different so back then when he found it he in fact didn't know what that was he didn't even know if it was a new element but he assumed it to be a new element that was in the sun then he named it as the unknown element that was found in the sun so it was like much later like 27 years later when another scientist observed the same bright yellow line that jansen observed in 1868 during a volcanic eruption see so observed the the light coming from a volcanic eruption the lava and he observed that light from the lava also contained this bright yellow line and now the same element was found here on earth first it was found in the sun and later much later it was found to be on earth but people didn't know what it was and since it is also found to be in the sun people named it okay well i'm not going to reveal the name now you can wait until the end to know of what element i'm talking about but i'm just going to continue further in 1895 it wasn't until till 1895 that element was able to be extracted independently like extracted and synthesized in a lab it was observed earlier yes but it was not able to be synthesized in the lab or extracted in a lab and that would uh, create a revolution because that element that i'm talking about is one of the most useful elements that we have that has been used uh, in so much in the science and technology domains that has that are used in rockets uh, like one of the things that we all know uh, that it is used for is like that gas or element when inhaled and you when you inhale it and talk you get a very crazy and squeaky and a funny voice i'm sure by this time you may have guessed what that element is already but still it is also used to fill up balloons that can carry telescopes and instruments scientific instruments to well up in the atmosphere to study it sort of satellites that discovery it is interesting to know that was made in india in guntur during an eclipse of course led by a french astronomer but still accompanied by lot of astronomers of what was back then called madras observatory but today the madras observatory is called or has been shifted to rather kodaikanal and it is called as the kodaikanal solar observatory and it's one of the best observatories in the country and they have it is well up and running and of course those of you been to kodaikanal to know know that uh, kodaikanal solar observatory is a very popular place and it's uh, known for its a uh, huge amounts of data that it is having for more than 100, 100 to 150 years so it is very uh, it's it's a very proud thing that that it happened under the uh, uh eclipse that happened in india so now i, I think uh, i think i it's time for me to reveal what that um, element is but but again before i reveal the element's name i i would like to say one last thing look this element is the second most abundant element in the universe only next to hydrogen and this element is the second lightest element only next to hydrogen and this element is is also sort of called as a noble element a noble gas it doesn't do much harm it doesn't react much with others and this element was found first in the sun before it was found on earth it's very interesting to know that wow yeah i think i think i i can't just uh, hold on the name anymore so the name of the element is helium and now helios means sun heliocentric theory you would know the sun being as the center of the solar system heliocentric theory so it was named helium because people back then uh, when when it was observed as the bright yellow line in the spectrum they didn't know what it was they they knew it they named it as an unknown element in the sun so they named it helium helios so helium so that's uh, how uh, helium was discovered to be in our universe and i think i hope you enjoyed this story i'll catch you up again soon again with another interesting story until then see you bye big shout out to obli chandran for this wonderful story to all the listeners out there uh, how many of you actually knew that helium was discovered from india how many of you have uh, visited the kodai solar observatory do let us know and uh, probably we can strike up a conversation on that you can send in your feedbacks uh, in mango education social media pages 
or you can also email us at hello at the mango dot com. So with that, this is Asif signing off. We'll catch you again in another episode of Hello Jaipur.